Tell us about the open source distributed automated machine learning platform that you're responsible for developing. Sure. So, um, so the platform is H2O and I've been involved in just generally H2O for a while. So not, not the auto ML stuff before that. So just every, every aspect of it, like what the API looks like, what the, um, algorithms do, like what kind of details do we store in the model objects, like anything related to that I've been involved with, um, since the beginning. Um, and so that just is a foundation for the automated platform. So basically that's just a whole bunch of algorithms, all the good ones, <laughs> none of the bad ones. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, you know, your, your friends like GVM or XGBoost or Random Forest, um, we have some deep learning, not as extensive as like a PyTorch or a TensorFlow, but basic sort of deep learning that works on tabular data. Um, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to list them all. We have a lot of unsupervised um, algorithms as well, anomaly detection, things like that. So that's kind of just the foundation. So we have all these algorithms. And now, uh, so after kind of we finished that part, um, <laughs> I was sort of noticing that I kept writing the same code over and over again to, you know, new data set, like, let me try my whole thing. And I try all the different yeah. algorithms, do grid searches, other random searches, um, just do as much searching as possible, then kind of bundle all that together with a stacked ensemble to get the best performance. And so I was already kind of doing the same thing over and over again. And so then that you were an auto ML algorithm. <laughs> yes. Yes. I mean, everyone is. So <laughs> you just, not everybody <laughs> what goes on and creates a whole software around it, but like you should, um, cause that's what I did. So basically that became H2O auto ML. And now it's just this sort of algorithm slash, you know, wrapper function that just does a whole bunch of tasks and it's, um, you know, will modify itself based on resources. Like if you only have short amount of time versus a long amount of time or things like that, it will modify itself. And so the goal after we first released that in 2017, um, and, you know, at the time it was basically, you know, teapot and auto SK learn, and maybe like a few other open source libraries that, you know, are not as popular. Um, and so the, you know, the auto ML space was, was a lot different than it is now. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it was, and, you know, in my opinion, like H2O is a, a platform that's designed to be very robust and fast and like enterprise level, um, low memory, like all the optimizations that you would want in a machine learning library. So I think uh, H2O AutoML represents kind of the first enterprise sort of ready AutoML system, S you know, the, at least in the open source. I can't say what else is out there right. otherwise. Um, so yeah. That was kind of the goal. And then so if this amazing, robust, optimized AutoML tool is open source and any of our listeners can be going out and using it, what is, so, you know, how does H2O make money? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I should check on that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the company started as exclusively open source. H2O was the only thing at the beginning. And, and in the beginning, we did enterprise support contracts, sort of like focusing on big clients like big banks and insurance companies, healthcare companies, people that can afford to pay for something essentially that's free. Um, so that was kind of the first revenue stream. Then we... Um, you know, wanted to add more revenue streams. Of course, we're a VC funded uh, company. Uh -huh. So that's how things go. Um, so then we created a whole new, a whole additional uh, proprietary platform called driverless AI, which is another auto ML platform. Um, it's, there's some similarities and differences between the one I work on and that one. Um, I won't go into too much detail unless we want to revisit that or maybe, or maybe we'll yeah, go, no, we'll I mean, yeah, go okay. into it. That's kind of interesting. Okay, sure. So like, I, I'm kind of guessing maybe it kind of, it leverages some of 
the ideas, the open source things that you're doing with uh, the main H2O, H2O AutoML library. But maybe there's some, I'm guessing if I was doing this, I might want to be having some bells and whistles that specifically cater to enterprise clients like security features or something like that. Yeah. So the algorithm itself is a little bit different, but it's a, a lot of it's also about the additional features that sort of help you operationalize things better. Um, and like fundamentally, they're both sort of ensemble algorithms. Um, one of them, so driverless AI uses um, like genetic programming to do very extensive um like feature selection and feature creation. So it's kind of like an automated feature engineering piece to that, which, you know, obviously uh, helps uh, with performance. So that's like probably the, in terms of just the algorithm itself, like what what is the difference? In, in the open source, we don't, we do some um, like feature processing, but not this sort of proprietary thing that, so, one of the things about H2O is that we've hired a lot of Kaggle grandmasters and they're, they're the mm -hmm. ones who are like very good at this kind of dark art of feature engineering. And so they are the ones that kind of came up with the, um, the automated feature engineering. So that's one thing. Driverless AI is also more focused on GPUs, whereas H2O is CPU. Uh, got it. Um, but, you know, in, in a sense, they're, they're quite comparable. Um, so, yeah, it's just sort of what you're looking for. Usually people yeah, yeah. kind of have a, an, either they use both or they just, you know, use one of, of the other. And so that's another right, right, right. revenue stream. And then the last thing that we have now is the H2O AI cloud. So that's a whole nother, you know, business basically um, within H2O where, it just makes it, I mean, you know, I think we could have even done this years ago, but like people, um, you know, we were more focused on building the actual algorithms themselves. And so now that we've kind of done that and we are still iterating and improving, but this just is like the next iteration of, okay, now we have all this good software and machine learning algorithms, like let's make this a lot easier to use on the cloud. And so we kind of just have our own cloud because of course you can use either tool on whatever cloud you want, but there's just a lot of like model tracking and governance and other features that you would get. Okay, cool. So the H2O AI cloud, it can be deployed to any of the major cloud service providers like AWS, Google Cloud. Um, so it's, it's, it allows model tracking and other kinds of governance features like you're describing in any of those physical clouds? Um, so yes. And with the caveat that like we, we can also just do everything on our own cloud, which is hosted on Amazon. Uh, we have that, but we also have like, what's called like the hybrid cloud where it's sort of also on-prem. So you can kind of choose right. whichever meets your needs. 